Hey there, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. It's actually one of the sunniest days out here in Scotland. It, this occurrence happens like once every 10 years, so you got to make sure to take advantage of it. Me and my wife went on a nice little walk, but I'm back now in the office. I took a little break to talk about servers, to talk about life and some other stuff. So <laughs> this is fun. Um, and I kind of thought about this in the last couple of years because I didn't really come up and do like these chatting type videos a lot. And I always kind of regretted that, because especially in the last two, three years, I kind of went down this big path of getting a bunch of books and falling more and more in love with programming. Um, so I learned about lower level programming languages like C. I picked up data structures, algorithms. I read a bunch about that. And I wish I would have just came up here and talked about it and would have documented this whole process. Uh, and that's something that I really want to do like moving forward in 2025. And I'm like really looking forward to it. So hope you are too. Um, but I thought I'd kind of take you back to like 2017, kind of when I started this YouTube channel, uh, because we are in the process of rewriting our course platform, uh, which is going to have a huge release and we want to make sure everything we got right and I thought it would be a good opportunity to kind of talk about uh, kind of my thought process and setting everything up. So back in 2017, I was working. I got one of my one of my first full stack uh, JavaScript lead roles, and I was in charge of rewriting this. <laughs> it was like a crypto thing, but it wasn't like a scam crypto website. Uh, but it, it would offer crypto payments, and my responsibility was to rewrite basically the whole front end over from jQuery. They were moving off from jQuery to vanilla JavaScript, which was crazy. Uh, but it was a great way to to like really understand JavaScript. Uh, I remember at the time React was kind of popping around the corner uh, and I was fuming about it. I was like, why don't we just fucking do it in React? It's going to be so much easier. Uh, but we did it in, in vanilla JavaScript. So. I rebuilt a bunch of stuff there and I thought, hey, it would be fun to kind of make YouTube videos about it and kind of document it. So that's when I did like stuff like this, like the vanilla JavaScript smooth scroll tutorial, which again, when you click on a link, you could get that smooth scrolling behavior. At the time, there wasn't like a CSS property, like the smooth scroll on your HTML to do that. Uh, so this was like a native way to do it. And then like carousels and stuff like this, I was posting about. And like the first couple of videos, like actually like really popped off, like a million five hundred views. That's crazy. And 200K for the first video. Uh, it allowed me to kind of focus more on this rather than full time job. And I eventually let that go and just went full time on YouTube. Uh, and like these numbers are crazy, by the way. Uh, and it's nothing like that anymore. You know, like my numbers, like I bet like a lot of the different channels now on YouTube are doing much, much better with me. And they're like, it's a whole different world. Uh, what was in 2017, 2018, 2020 to what it is now. And it's fantastic. Like there's a lot of very talented people, uh, but you know, nothing's going to stay up all the time. You know, stuff is going to go down with YouTube. Sometimes you're going to be popular. Sometimes you're not going to be popular. Uh, and you're just going to have to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. And then keep on going from there. I'm not, I'm, I don't think I ever get the numbers I used to have in the past. Uh, but I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. Like, I absolutely love uh, doing what I'm doing. And I want to document this more on the YouTube channel. And hopefully get other people, you know, really interested in programming. Because it's such a beautiful thing. So at the time, uh, I was looking for a way to set up a course platform. I thought that would be a really great idea. I had a lot of fun ideas to do for like projects as well for the courses. So I was like, okay, let's do this. But the channel was going pretty quick at the time. So I needed to have a great solution that just works and is reliable for years. And that's something I feel like you really need to consider when you want to deploy an application that's going to get used by people. Uh, our course platform had 45,000 students at the time, so it was really, really large. And at the time, it was really hard to kind of know what to expect. I didn't have that much money at the time, so I, I didn't know the costs that I was going to acquire with like Vimeo, for example, or whatever. I'm going to pay bloody $5,000 for hosting these videos, or what's it going to be? 
So the solution I opted at the time was Teachable. It made perfect sense. At the time, Stripe wasn't even operating in the country I was living before that, so that wasn't even an option. But also doing the tax side in Europe is, is much more complicated. Uh, so a merchant of record made more sense. Nowadays, oh, it's super easy. You have Polar, you have all of these different services uh, that you can opt to. But at the time, it was a different world. Uh, so I went with Teachable, and at the time, that was fantastic. It offered digital downloads, you could do zip files, you could do course completion, all of that jazz. So even though it was great at the time, and it would be able to handle that load of new users coming in and watching the courses, it made the, the process of, of doing the payments much, much simpler. But at a point, as someone that's teaching people you know, about programming and about web development specifically, you want a course platform that kind of mirrors that. And I, I felt that at one point, Teachable does not mirror anything that you know I could offer or you know all the knowledge that I could share uh, through something that looks like this and with the speed that Teachable is. Because no offense, but it's, it's not too snappy the last time I went on it. Um, so we went through the whole process of reworking it and we are excited to launch it this year. Uh, I'm, I'm going to share more and more details. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to be coming up here on the YouTubes and just keep an eye on it. Now, spoiler, this is how our stack is going to look like moving forward. We're going to be using Cloudflare together with Stanstack and React. But I want to get like, how do we get here in the first place? Because this took a long process to actually come up with, Hey, this is the final solution that we're moving forward with. And I just, uh, I never even spoke about like the serverless versus VPS ever on this channel, like ever. Uh, so I'll just comment on that as well. Look, if you make a little VPS, you buy this off whatever you want, Digital Ocean, Hetzner, it's great. And depending what you put in on here, like this can be a great solution. So let's say you're just hosting a super simple static website okay this is a static website that has html css you might have some interactivity with javascript you might even have some api functionality so more like also a jam stack right there and what's also included here is spas right so if you're doing a, a fully client-side interactive uh, application with react that's still just static files that you can still host on a CDN. And this is why it's really important to know kind of what falls in this project. Hey, is my project just a super simple landing page like this one, for example? This is just a static page. It has a video attached to it, sure, but that's coming from an API. But other than that, that's pretty much it. This is just going to lead to another page here. So if you have something simple like this, please, there's no need to reach out for really complicated full stack solutions, all right, like Next.js or whatever. Just go with Astro in this case. You know, Astro is really good for something like this where you can uh, just generate a couple of static files. You can opt in uh, with dynamic islands if you want or by adding JavaScript. And that's pretty much it. And then you can just host it to a CDN. If you want to do spas, you might not need to necessarily do Astro, but you can do something like, you know, uh, something like the Tanstack router starter or maybe solid or something like that. But you can still host that on GitHub pages and get away with that. So don't make your life more complicated than it is where you can. That's probably one of the biggest lessons I learned. The more like services you add, the more overhead and the more stuff that you the more stuff you need to essentially worry about. Now there's nothing wrong with hosting the static sites on a VPS or something like that. That's perfectly fine. So you can still host all your different uh, jam stacks, uh, your Astro applications right here, and then you can still put it behind a CDN and it'll pretty much work the same way. Now let's say we're building an e-commerce website. Well, hold on, now there's a lot more things involved. Now we actually need some sort of database to store users or potentially maybe like, if not a database, at least like a KV store. Now we also need a way to handle payments. Now we need a way to do a bunch more stuff uh, to cover that this whole system works perfectly fine, right? Now, when it comes to the VPS, it gets a little bit more complicated. We can just simply host, we could opt for a spa, but then the problem is that we kind of lose out on all the SSR and, and all that SEO. 
So now you'd have to opt for a solution that involves a server, right? So a VPS is one option that you could do, but the other option would be serverless. But you gotta make sure that you know all the pros and cons before you actually commit to it. Because at the end of the day, this is still compute that might just be running in one single place, which might be, let's say, US East, right? If someone accesses uh, your VPS from across the world, then they're gonna have a much higher latency, maybe like 800 MS, compared to using something like serverless, geez, which is globally distributed compute all over the world, right? So you might have a compute in the US, you might have a compute in Germany, one in Australia, one in uh, here, <laughs> what's it called? South Africa, not South Africa, South America, I know it. Uh, anyway, all right, so it's distributed across the world. So if you're trying to access it from, I don't know, Hungary to Germany, right? It's really close. So you'll get like 100 MS. So that's your compute advantage here with serverless. Again, I'm not gonna debate like uh, the pricing and stuff like that. Like you'll know if you are comfortable with it or not. But that's something really like big to consider, you know, when you're hosting a node app and you're just like, oh, well, I'm running it on one uh, virtual private server. Okay, but like how long is this going to be a viable solution? You know, in two years, let's say this grows, you know, to more users. Well, then how are you going to move on forward from that? So, yeah, I mean, you can take that, take that VPS, you know, you can buy another VPS and kind of hook it up and do some load balancing stuff. But then how much time are you spending on this? How many hundreds of hours are you spending on trying to recreate this whole system. And wait a minute, like we haven't even really talked about databases here uh, because, okay, well, your service probably needs a database as well. So how are we gonna do this? Well, are we gonna do it on the same VPS? Are we just gonna split this up and add a database in here? But then what if that database gets too big and it's taking up all the 50 gigabytes of storage on this VPS? Then I can upgrade the storage, right? Scale this up a bit vertically, but how long is that gonna last? Or should we just do this simply on by its own and then kind of share that to this and then share that to this compute? So there's a lot of questions that you, you need to go to as soon as you add one more service on top of this. Or like if I want to add caching in a VPS, yeah, it's simple. I can, I can just pop into Redis and I can, you know, do 10 bajillion operations on it and I'm not going to pay a buck for that. Well, I'm going to pay the like six pounds for the server, but that's it, right? I'm not paying per compute, per like invocation or whatever. So it's really easy to actually add the services and in the short term it might look like, well, this is super cheap, right? Because I can just add a bunch of services and it's free because it's on my VPS. But if one of these scales and goes haywire or one of these goes down, then, then the whole thing comes down crashing and burning. So for a while, like we went like through this whole cycle of trying to figure out what is right for us. And we ended up going for serverless. We wanted that reliability. We wanted to not worry about, uh, you know, our course platform to fall, fall down. So in the space, there's a lot of different people, you know, there's Vercel, there's Cloudflare, uh, there's, uh, what else, AWS. Those are the big players mainly. And I just really want you to like, I'm not even like gonna say like pick this one, pick that one, but really think about what you need from each one of them, right? Okay, I need streaming, I need video streaming. What are my options? Well, I have bunny.net, I have, um, R2, what's what's the bloody Cloudflare one's called? It's not R2. Um, it doesn't have a name, I think it's just video streaming, they call it. But you have that as an option, right? And then you have Vimeo and some other stuff. And really, like, see, okay, well, Bunny Nets is, like, really cheap. Uh, Cloudflare's is, is, is not as cheap as Bunny's. But if I go down the Cloudflare route, I can take advantage of all these other stuff. So maybe if I go you know, deploying on workers, maybe that's a viability that can offer all the solutions for a good price. So that's kind of what we landed up for because we ended up needing quite a couple of things, right? We ended up needing a KV store, uh, which is gonna be mainly used to check like, uh, hold the user sessions, but also hold uh, if the user has an active subscription. So this is great because it can be really fast. Um, we can read that off. It comes, you know, globally distributed really closely with the worker as well. So the speeds are gonna be fantastic. And it's really cheap and they give you like a million bloody operations per day for free. And then their $5 ones offers like 10, 10x even more. So that made a lot of sense. 
Then we also needed a place to host our images basically, and maybe even like stream the videos from there. We're gonna give it a shot, uh, which is gonna be R2. So this is kind of like uh, an S3 bucket with AWS. Why does that make it like that? Uh, so like course thumbnails that you're gonna see, promotional images that you're gonna see, maybe custom uh, images that users upload in the future are gonna be hosted on here. And again, we're gonna try streaming off video as well from here, but currently the way we have it hooked up is through their streaming service. Then we are gonna opt in for D1, which is gonna be our primary database here. For what we need it for, the data here is not gonna be too big in our case. So that's perfect. We're mainly gonna use this to hold information about courses, uh, maybe like chapter descriptions and stuff like that. And through the workers now, there are so many features that we are gonna take advantage of as well, such as like rate limiting. This is something that you really need to keep in mind uh, when you have an API that you're gonna hit or if, for any like post requests that you can make. So for example, on our course platform, we're gonna have a comment section, right? You don't wanna be able to just hit enter on this uh, like a million times and do a million requests over and like inundate your database or whatever. So you wanna make sure you have rate limiting set up for uh, your endpoints. So with this, with workers, it's super easy. It's just like one line of code, two lines of code, and it just works. So stuff like that, that's out the gate really good. Captchas as well for like signing up and signing in um, is, is also really easy to hook up there. So that's provided for you. And I'm not like sponsored by Cloudflare on anything though. If, if you, if any of you watch it, this feel free, I'm very friendly, I don't bite. Um, but this is what made sense for the project, right? Cause these are like really important things uh, that need to be in this application. Uh, for payments, like that wasn't really a problem. Uh, we are gonna be using Polar for, for that. And payments, so Polar, uh, because they act as a merchant of records. So this made a lot of sense. And this is basically gonna sync up with the KV store here uh, in Cloudflare. So I feel like this kind of stack made a lot of sense to kind of help us focus more on building out, you know, just a really good product rather than focusing too much on worrying about, uh, you know, scaling issues. So even if you like, you don't need to use Cloudflare, right? This is my sponsorship opportunity gone. You don't need to use them, but really think about like what you need. That's if there's one thing I want you to take out from this video is, is what do you need? What does your bloody application need that you need to get all these services in, right? If you don't need anything, then you probably don't need any of these. Okay. So consider that. Is it a static site? Are you just doing a simple HTML site, you know, with some marketing on it? Then don't bother with anything. Even if you're a spa, even if you're a spa kind of guy, okay? The most here you're gonna need to do is maybe use a database service. And then that is gonna take you so far away already. Hook this up with a database, maybe hook up like a Jipity API to it, and you can go really, really far, okay? All right, that's gonna be it for me today. I uh, hope you enjoyed my blabbering and consider dropping a little subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. Okay, video over.